Uh, Alright. <clears throat> yeah, how's it going, everybody? It's the Masked Man. And today is going to be uh, the first and the last episode of the whatever the hell the name of this podcast was going to be, because I don't even know. I can't commit to something long term. Uh, but this is sort of my loophole caveat way into getting a, sca uh, a scam with vid. Fucking hell. A video <laughs> with scam. <laughs> a vid with scam, because. Uh, he, you know, uh, creative <laughs> reasons or all the whatnots. Personally, I just think he's racist, but, you know, we won't get into that. Um, I am quite racist, especially, like, <laughs> what are you, Puerto Rican or something? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, that's going to be an issue. Yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I thought this would be interesting, just sort of us two having to talk about different uh, subjects and topics. Uh, things related to anime and manga and also outside of anime and manga. But before we get into that, I want to introduce the sponsor for today's video. Today's video is brought to you by Figurama Collectors. Figurama Collectors has previously sponsored me on other videos, but today they bring to you a statue from the series Seven Deadly Sins, specifically the fight between Escanor and Esterosa. As always, the statue is of extremely high quality, and it even comes with two swappable torsos of Escanor, uh, his standard in battle damaged, as well as two swappable portraits of Esterosa, him being calm and then him being aggressive. It's inspired by medieval architecture, and it features the unique symbol of the lion sin of pride and the commandment of love, uh, perfectly showcasing the alternative portraits alongside the main statue. It truly symbolizes the epic clash of sin and commandment. So if you are interested, the pre-order is on February 26th at 11 p.m. JST, and the statues sell out very fast, usually less than 24 hours, sometimes even as little as one hour. So make sure you get there as soon as you can for the pre-order, as well as you'll be offered with the coupon code T-M-M-E-V-E-E-F-S for $25 off of your purchase. So once again, thanks to Figurama Collectors for sponsoring today's video. So getting into the first topic, I guess it's sort of like, how do you feel uh, about being a content creator right now? Like, where are you at with that? Because I'm all over the place regarding this subject, so I kind of want to, I'm interested in knowing how you kind of feel about, you know, being a YouTuber and, and all the whatnots. You know, this is like the job I've wanted to do ever since I was like a little, little kid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. When I was in school, I wanted to be like a comedian. Oh, oh, sorry, I swore. I wanted to be a freaking comedian. And, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously being a comedian is much harder than being a YouTuber. And, like, the people I watched growing up were, like, Game Grumps and uh, the Black Hokage. I've already mentioned them on the uh, other thing that we did. And people like yeah, that. Yeah. So, like, I, I've just always wanted to fucking do YouTube. Like, I had, like, elaborate plans drawn out with my, like, friend in middle school about how we would like get an apartment together and just make like let's plays and stuff so right right yeah this is like my favorite thing to do i mean this is like what i enjoy talking about it's what i enjoy doing and uh mm -hmm. yeah i mean it ends up feeling like work sometimes but right, i'm happy right. doing it that's actually very interesting and i think that's just sort of like a passion thing because my answer would probably be the exact opposite um this is not what i was planning on doing at all like this this was this so like my original goal and i've spoken about this before so i won't get into it too long um but i wanted to originally be a professional soccer player covid and some other personal things kind of threw that um <coughs> side to side and uh after graduating my senior year during near the end of my senior year uh you know because i was okay at, at editing and, and all the whatnots um my friends were like yo you should start a channel i was like sure why not and so YouTube for me is, right now has kind of ended up being something that just worked, you know? And so it's really cool and interesting when, when there is people who, you know, this was their passion, this was their dream, because that's dope. Um, but for me, this is just something I feel like I'm doing temporarily, you know? And uh, I think you could tell with some of the stuff that I've done to the channel uh, that I'm not too uh, ecstatic at the times, although I consider it like a huge blessing, you feel me? Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, this sucks. Like, no, that's not the case at all. Like, it's definitely dope. Um, but I don't think it. I'd consider it like my life passion per se, you know? You seem um, to like doing collabs a lot. Like, you, you spread your seed quite a bit on YouTube. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Because, you know, like, obviously there were people that I watched growing up. Um, and, and content creators that I enjoy watching. So kind of getting to know them and uh, do stuff with them for me is like, to me that's a bit more of a joy. Cause I feel like it's it's not just me doing whatever I want when I want and putting as much effort as I feel like, but now I feel like it's another dynamic being added. And I do enjoy that a bit more um, yeah. because I feel, I think I feel a little more accomplished with collabs 
You know, it's it's sort of like before, like two years ago, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Like yeah. being in a call with you, like that that wouldn't be a reality for me. Um, so for me, it's 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 a way where I go. Oh yeah, this is how far I've come. And, Speaking and of, like this is, uh, I think what's interesting is this is like our second time ever talking voice to voice. Like usually we're sending like you know racist yeah. memes to each other. <laughs> and yeah, things you'd get yeah. canceled over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's totally not me. I, I actually <laughs> chill. You know. uh, now, but yeah, this is this is uh, only our second time, um, which is interesting because like we know at least a few people. Like yeah. we have mutuals, but it's always kind of like you know you're over. And the thing is, is is uh, is juicy, right? Like he's asked me before, like yo, do I want to like ever go and chill and and, and all the whatnots? But I'm just kind of like you know, I don't want to. Um, how do I put it? It's sort of like I don't want to barge into somewhere I'm not welcome. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he, I don't here's want to something myself. that you probably wouldn't be able to like surmise by my content, but I'm a very shy fucker. Like I've always been an extremely shy person, and like it's been like a mission to go from you know not knowing how to fucking talk to strangers to like forcing myself to do stuff I don't want to do. Like when we did the podcast with Roma, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's I I, I didn't fully want to do that like i wasn't comfortable doing it you know what i mean because right. like I'm, I'm naturally very like introverted and shy but like that's something mm-hmm. i wanted to do for like character development you know what i mean right okay that's interesting what bro that's so wild because like for me and i'm not saying this just to be like oh look i'm the exact opposite but no seriously um as a kid i was extremely talkative and because i grew up in, in you know around you know people i grew up around um being loud was kind of the thing you know Mm -hmm. um and so it was it was a thing where i've had to go through the opposite in a way where now i'm kind of like okay i need to learn to keep my mouth shut sometimes because i'm very (laughs) observative but i i tend to point things out verbally too much and my first impressions many times are um they're not the best ones you know uh, you know, after later on, it's funny because later on, like all the people that I've known now for like a year or so, um, because of YouTube, they're like, you know, n- and now they're like, oh, you know, you're a really cool guy and all the whatnots. But they're like, at first, we all thought like you were just a ginormous asshole, and I, I didn't realize it. And I was just kind of like, oh, well, um, I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird. <laughs> but, like, it, at school, like uh, growing up, it was really weird because like with friends and in the right social setting, like I'd be very loud and you know extroverted and like you know I like being the class clown you know what I mean like I like making people laugh but yeah of course if you had asked me to like order my own food at fucking McDonald's later like I would have hated it you know like I I literally there's points where I literally asked other people to like order for me and stuff like it was super weird but yeah no I kind of experienced (laughs) (laughs) but yeah I kind of experienced that thing that you're talking about where people either like hated you or they loved you just because like you know your loud personality or whatever Right, right, right. Yeah. So recently for me, though, it's been a thing where I've I've tried to learn to to chill a lot more. And in real life, I'm more um, keep to myself. uh, And then once I feel more comfortable, then I'll, you know, but no, it was definitely an an opposite kind of development for me. I didn't know when to uh, to just let things go and not say something, Um, which I think it to a certain degree is is like helped me, though, with like the YouTube thing, because like we talked about this on the thing with Roma, but 99% 99% of my videos are on the fly like all of like almost all of them are on the fly like I just record and I talk obviously I'll like punch and record so you know you don't hear the th- <gasps> but you know uh, overall you I can just hear that in to- my videos even <laughs> huh you can hear that in my videos even oh really oh, just constant yeah. oh, fucking no. <laughs> The thing is, is, you don't notice it until someone points it out, or you notice it yourself. I feel like, yeah, when I mean, I'm watching it, I can ruin. Video, I won't really notice. I can ruin every video of mine. Like, if you just think about like the spit in my mouth, it'll fuck the whole video up for you. Ooh, uh, okay. Just because I like, right, I, well, I compress uh, my audio, so like the quieter things are like about the same noise as like my talking voice. Uh, so yeah, right, right. Uh, okay, all right, all right. So I'll uh, I'll keep that in mind for the next one. Whoop. <laughs> Um, but I guess now kind of transitioning into that whole thing of like video making because you had the whole thing with the monster uh, Musume video which oh, yeah. uh, got uh, which by the way I I don't know if what you did on the thumbnail was intentional <laughs> or maybe my mind is just messed up and I read into it too much but so Patrick right yeah that's not chocolate like I know that 
or am I wrong? Like, well, if the if the bots are asking, then it's definitely chocolate. And like I, I thought in my head, like I can use that excuse, like why are you guys doing this to me? It's just it's mere chocolate. It's just chocolate. But uh, no, the, the implication is definitely Patrick ate some ass. <laughs> Right, okay, so I have because some of your thumbnails do be like that. Like they're very simple and, and they're there and, and they work, but when it's a when it's a slightly more erotic series, then yeah. listen, the fact that my dress up darling was doing better than Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer for like the first four weeks in a row goes to show that like nothing works better than horny in the anime yeah. community. Like Nux is my boy, but he's managed to make an entire career off of that, you know? And that, that that's um, one of the things that pissed me off when like I would get demonetized over like mm -hmm. a simple thumbnail, because I've seen people get like I don't even know what I can say on this podcast, but like, like that alone they, should they be enough. Pretty wild stuff. Like for me to have to censor myself, like talking about his thumbnails should give you an idea of like how raunchy they are. And it's like, I'm not hating right. on him. I'm just like, I'm hating on YouTube. Like where is the fucking right, right. line? Where they allow certain things. Yeah. Where they draw yeah. the line. Cause that, that's always a bit of a headache. But, uh, I, I guess, uh, the next thing kind of getting into it, what would you say is like your... Your creative process with the video like do you ever go <sighs> oh i just feel like talking about this series or does someone never like recommend an idea or yeah so like this is a job you know what i mean so there are topics that i want to talk <laughs> right. about and there's topics that i have you to, talk, have to about. talk about yeah so yeah. when you see a video like i found all the anime you should watch this season or like i don't know the mushiku tensei one that i just did that sucked nobody watched like stuff like that, mm -hmm. things I have to do. But when I make a video Wait, like Shoko Tensei, didn't that get a million views? Uh, my first one. I made a recent one. See, you, oh. the, you didn't even know. <laughs> okay, <All right>. sorry. <laughs> continue, continue, continue. Yeah, but um, yeah, there's a lot of videos I really like to make and just have in my head for like years. Like, uh, I made a video about sword art that I've been thinking of for like ever. Finally did it. Stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. I'll have an idea festering in my mind. And then I'll make filler content, so to speak. Like, it's not like I try less hard on the filler content. It's just stuff I'm less, you know, excited right, about. Right. And, um, I, you know, yeah, yeah, eventually yeah. I look at the one that I wanted to make after I've had, like, a successful month or whatever. And I'm like, all right, now's the time. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, no. For me, it's weird. Um, it's sort of like I do whatever I feel like. And that's it. There, there have been times where I've done videos where it's like, okay, the channel needs this. If not, like, I might be in some trouble down the road. Um, so then I'll do it, and then there's, yeah, the majority of my videos, though, I'm just kind of like, oh, there's this idea. So, like, a good example would be, like, the Tokyo Revengers one I did recently. Like, that was something that everyone was talking about it. Mm -hmm. And since I was, at first, you know, because before you did your video, I think months before I had done a video on Tokyo Revengers, and I think I was, like, one of the only ones. I easily, by far, had, like, the largest video on it. And so I felt like, you know, I was kind of the one vouching for the series and I kind of have to address this. Um, so there was that. And then uh, there have been other times where I've tried to expand into other avenues. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like the Ziz video did well, the Denzel Curry one didn't, uh, the Dark Souls video did really well, um, and then uh, so on and so forth. But yeah, no, it's sort of just like whatever pops up in my head and whatever I feel like that day is kind of what I go for. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to let you know that that uh, Tokyo Revengers thumbnail pissed me off. Why? Because I've been wanting to use Wojax in my thumbnails <laughs> and I couldn't figure out how and I just saw that shit in my feed and it was, it, it just fucking pissed me off because now I can't use the Wojax. Uh, who said you couldn't? Go ahead. I can't, you know? bro. I can't do it. It's a pride thing. So quick question. Yeah, it's a pride and thing. I need to know this for me because <laughs> I'm going to open up in a second. How often do you see something of mine and it bothers you? Like genuinely. Um... I don't know, not not really, like, I've always, like, me. I've honestly, like, I've always liked your thumbnails. Like, when I was right, around, right. like, maybe 100k or something, like, I would screenshot thumbnails that I liked and, like, put that in mm. a folder of, like, you know, kind of, kind of like, inspiration or whatever, because I'm, I'm very not, yeah. uh, I'm not visually gifted. Like, I'm not, I'm terrible at art and stuff like that, right, and, like, right. graphic design, like, I, it fucking sucks. Like, it's a miracle I got my YouTube banner to look presentable. Um, right, right. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I like a lot of them. Um, I'm trying to think of one that pissed me off, just because like, ah, oh, this fucker talked about it first, or like, ah, <laughs> oh, you fucking did this in a thumbnail before me. Right, right. It's not extremely uh -huh. often, but yeah. What, what, what were you gonna say? 
No, uh, you're like uh, the bane of my existence. <laughs> Being completely so, like you, <laughs> you know how like Dragon Ball in the abridged series. Have you seen Dragon Ball abridged? I'd be no. surprised if. No, damn it. Okay, um, so to kind of explain it. In the abridged series, obviously, it's a comedic version of these characters. Although they, yeah. they do some of the characters extraordinarily well. Like, Cell and Vegeta, I would argue, are almost just as good as from the original series, just in a very different sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, in the series, they have a, a thing called the Goku button. So, basically, um, Vegeta, right, they'll be, he'll be ready to fight someone. And then they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm here for Goku. And it'll drive him insane, and he'll just go off and, like, murder the person. Um... For me, I have like that scam button, and I'm j I'm being honest here, cause um, <laughs> it's one of those things where, in a way, I've always so for me, it's always been totally not Mark Swag, Chibi, and then you. Um, you guys are the ones that I kind of look at. Like without all of you, I wouldn't be here as as a content creator. And so for you specifically, it's like it's everything. And and in a way, it's it's competitive envy, if that explains it. Sort of like the voice, the editing, the presentation, the humor, like all of it. And I look at it and I go, holy hell, I suck. Like that that's just the, the negative side of it in a sense. And so whenever you... Because we talked about this last time, but when you did the manga recommendation video and Akumetsu oh, yeah, was in Akumetsu. there, yeah. drove me <laughs> insane. Like, I actually tried for, like, the next month to think about how can I move on from manga, because I was like, <laughs> talk. And then recently you did the Soul Eater one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know you've done a Soul Eater video. It's called, uh, like, Remember Soul Eater. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I've, I've seen oh. that, like, in my sub box. Or not in my sub box. Like, somewhere. Like, recommended to me. And then the me. Inuyashiki thing, and it was... it was So, for me, it's one of those things where, obviously, um, of course, and, and, and I'm, I'm somewhat joking here, um, of course, I always, like, wish you the best of success. Like, I don't prey on your downfall. I, let me just make that very clear to those watching, you know? I'm, I'm not, a, <clears throat> I'm not like, going on saying that, but um, if not, it's one of those things where it's, like, uh, it's... Uh, I don't know. It's just sort of like uh, imagine you're like sparring against someone else in boxing and you just <laughs> always lose. Like you're just you're always just like you, you think about what KO is right there. But now yeah. Um anyways, on that, I think it's uh, very interesting you say that because I feel the same way about like fucking Donkey and like Nakey Jakey. Like I'll watch one of right. their videos and be like, "What the fuck am I doing right now?" And like really? Yeah, I mean, I've gotten to where I am by hating on people, you know, like, just like, <laughs> like, right. what really drove me when I was first going is like, oh my god, this f***er makes, like, shitty-ass videos, and he has, like, so much more subs than me, like, I'm f***ing, oh, and I just pumped out a video, pumped right. out a video, pumped out a video, and, like, now it's like, the people that are far bigger than me are just, like, actually making content that's objectively better, yeah. I think, in my opinion. And so, like, right, I watched, like, a right. fucking donkey video, and I'm like, fuck, like, I need to, like, read more about, like, how to write, uh, like, effective arguments and, like, shit like this. Like, I'll, I'll go through mm -hmm. training arcs while I'll, like, read actual books about, like, Jeez. writing and, like, all sorts of stuff. Right, right. No, yeah, so you're definitely passionate for me. I guess what I was trying to voice is more so, like, because I, I expressed it earlier, like, I don't really care about the ch I say that being, I feel like, a little Sundere-ish, because I obviously do care about my channel, <laughs> but, like... It's one of those things where it's like, I just kind of do whatever, and then I see something of yours, and it makes me want to focus. That's what it is. Like, mm. then I'm like, okay, game on. My next video is going to be good. Um, so that that's kind of the, the case, but... Have you ever uh, yet, done a scripted uh, video? Yeah. Um, I have. I did scripted you go hard? The, uh, huh? Did you go hard? I think I did. I think I really did. Uh, the... Uh, the how to write the perfect protagonist antagonist i think my best video without a doubt is the berserk documentary though without a doubt i think that one was a lot of of effort and time and i edited that one myself too it took me like two weeks and it's like an hour long video um also i think now i could do a better job kind of cutting out some of the unnecessary stuff where i just mm -hmm. kind of like go into retelling the story of berserk a little bit but i did that to set up like miro's quotes and why he did this certain thing within the narrative um mm -hmm. But yeah, those I'd say those are the videos that I've uh, scripted. The next one I have coming out, I hope to release when Elden Ring comes out, maybe. Um, yeah. Where it's like I want to talk about how the Soulsborne series 
masters tragic storytelling because you would think in a game that's done this through demon souls dark souls dark souls 2 dark souls 3 bloodborne and then i haven't fully played sekiro but it's like the the tragic nature of the of the stories in the world doesn't get tiring and i'm wondering how they just nail it so many times with so mm. many characters that are sort of of the same type of tragedy if you will you know so i'm kind of getting into that searching up what goes into actually writing a good tragedy you know how you go about creating a certain tone throughout your world and consistency and uh, so why didn't you finish sekiro uh because i suck at it i couldn't oh. i couldn't with the learning curve it was too much for me i just it also That's just didn't grab dude. me you know yeah i mean that, that was my first souls game so like i i, I can't uh, understand that perspective really right. like i was just forced to fucking get good right right now yeah my first one was dark souls 3 uh, that was my first uh, Souls game. I think everyone's favorite is their first, usually, from what yeah, I've noticed. I don't know. Uh, like, I just played uh, Dark Souls 3. I just beat it, like, a week ago for the first time. Um, ah. It was fire as fuck. And okay, I don't so know. There's, like, so many. That. Like, I can see so many, like, pros and cons to, like, Sekiro versus Dark Souls. Like, I like that in right. Dark Souls. Like, you play the game how you want to play the game. But I also right. like that in Sekiro. Like, I know that you had to go through the same shit as me with the same build and like same strats or not same strats mm. but you know what i mean like yeah, i, I yeah, don't know yeah, there's yeah. there's so they're good fucking games, yeah no dude. they're both amazing in in each way so i guess now getting into a little bit of the soulsborne games more specifically dark souls 3 because i'm nice at that game like i don't mean to brag but i suck at most video games literally i'm terrible like minecraft i actually struggle at don't laugh <laughs> but the I told you not to laugh no, but, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the thing is though is like with dark souls 3 like i've beaten it now like 12 times um, damn and so no yeah I, I just sit there when I'm bored and run through the game and, and, and in a way running through the game is what helps me a lot with uh, ideas sometimes for videos like it's kind of oh. in a way and you wouldn't think this playing Dark Souls is almost like meditation like but for me it is that's how <laughs> that's how much I've gotten comfortable with three um, PvP me bro I'd be actually I don't play much PvP, but I'd totally be down. We could totally do that. You could finally have something to upload to your gaming channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd be down. <laughs> but, but um, not yeah. Like uh, for me though, it's it, I actually think because I was telling you about, and I guess this will be more so of the public announcement because I plan on releasing it late March. Um, but I think Dark Souls and Bloodborne has been more of an inspiration for the story that I'm currently working on more than Berserk itself, without a doubt. Um, Damn. even though Berserk inspired those two games, but, uh, I guess getting into more so specifically Dark Souls 3, what was, okay, what build did you use, your favorite boss, and your least favorite boss? Well, you see, I'm an alpha male, so I played as a pyromancer, because everybody's like, oh, don't use a fucking pyromancer on your first run, like, it's gonna be too hard, blah, 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 so I ran through with the fire hand and stuff. Um. <laughs> right. It was fun as shit. Uh, my favorite boss is definitely Osiris, the, the like, little turkey thing. He is yeah, so yeah, yeah. cool. Like, you walk in and he's just, like, screaming oh, about this invisible baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's awesome. And yeah. um, my least favorite, like, I have a recording of it because I was planning on doing a video, but I, I don't know. I kind of dropped it. But, um... Oh. The demons in pain, demons, uh, demons from below. Ooh, I mean, they're they're the best, but the hardest two v one fight in the entire series. Yeah, yeah now no, imagine that, but your whole fucking build is useless because you're a pyromancer. You're fire. Mm, yeah. Now that was the moment where you you realized, you know, maybe being an alpha wasn't the best. Uh, yeah. Way. You should have been a should have been a sigma. And went yeah, I have me saying build. some terrible things, terrible, terrible <laughs> things recorded. Like if if my hard drive got hacked, I would be fucked. Oh, I'm gonna have to see that. I'm gonna have to see it privately. Like you gotta stream <laughs> yeah. it for me one time. Yeah. Like, I, um, but no, yeah. Uh, the the yeah, no. The demon princes are tricky for me. My first playthrough of the game, my favorite boss uh, on my first playthrough was Gale. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sick. My least favorite was Sister Freed. Or what Frida. build were you playing? Uh, at my original build was a knight build. I did a sh I did strength. I used Guts's sword for my very first build, and then eventually oh, yeah. I switched to to Zod's sword. And um, they have Zod's sword. Yeah, the curved great sword. They have it. It's basically Zod's sword, and that was the one I I actually beat the game with. Um, on consistent playthroughs, though, uh, I used the mercenary build, which comes with the cell sword twin blades. Which if you use that oh, yeah. weapon, you actually don't need another weapon in the entire game easily the best starter weapon like it's honestly filthy. i used those with the pyromancer i like infused it with uh chaos and just tore through everything oh, 
Well, you're supposed to sharp infuse it, but go crazy. Chaos. I don't know. Like, everybody told me that was, like, the meta weapon, so I was like, cool, I'll just have it scaled to Chaos Ents and Faith. Oh, well, because you yeah. were already having... Yeah, that's right, because you went with an Intelligent Faith build. Never mind. I, I tend to go with a Dexterity build. Um, cause Dex is better than sex. I think. Don't that's they say the, Dex builds are like pussies or something? I don't. I don't believe that because I think say, fast weapons are the coolest. That. Yeah, they could say that, but like, it runs through the game the fastest. Oh, so. just tell them to cope harder. Right. Yeah, that's literally what I do. They're like, oh, you're such a girl. You use a Dex build. Yeah, I'm shut like, up, All right, bro. You suck it. I just hate slow um, weapons, dude. It makes me feel uh, like I'm fighting in my fucking dreams. The, <laughs> the thing is, though, is like using Guts' sword. And then getting like the armor sets that you put together that kind of look like the Berserker armor mm. is so much fun. Because then once you go to New Game Plus and stuff, you're literally just slashing through everything like guts, and it's 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 the closest thing I'm gonna get to an actual like Berserk video game that isn't that yeah. uh, high. Uh, the the what what's the one Berserk game that came out that was basically a uh, it was basically just a hack and slash. I forget what the original. There's game a lot was of called. Berserk games. I think. No, nah, but I I mean the 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 newest one that came out, the one where oh. you just essentially like they had a Zelda game that played just like it. I think it was Hyrule Warriors. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I know but what you're talking about. Those games yeah. are are something else. Um, but whatever. Uh, essentially, yeah. But nah, for me, it's it's the most fun. I just think like the Soulsborne franchise is so like that feeling of being stuck on something and then beating it. Yeah. I actually don't think I've experienced like. A greater relief like I don't think I have um, you'd have to point a gun to my face and then let me walk away and live for me to like have that level of whoa I like just you know that yeah. that that uh. yeah, what I like about like the fights is like I can feel myself like building neural connections like I might have f- this up one time but now that's like locked into my brain and like I see this pattern and like I'll know what to do yeah. next time and like you just get better and better like you're ability at fighting the bosses literally scales with every death you know what right, I mean right, and sometimes right. you start getting worse and you need to like take a break and like you know do something else because you're just like mm-hmm. getting so mad at the goddamn game but <laughs> right 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 yeah but, like the dancer took me three hours and it took me three hours because like I wanted to beat it under level just to like say I could you know what I mean yeah because you can yeah. fight the dancer early as hell um, yeah, but yeah, I did a can. new game plus on the second try just super easy just tore right. through it Right, exactly, yeah. For me, Dancer took me 51 tries my first time. Ooh. 50 tries my first time, because I was underleveled as well. And yeah. Frida took me 50-something as well. Gale only took me three my first time. And I don't remember, Medir took me like 20, 30-something, I think. I even know Medir. I just I'm unplugged my thing. Hmm? Hello? Yeah, yeah, what's up? You just started coming out of my speakers. That could have been oh, disastrous. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, we're good. Yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know I get... Madeira was in the game, dude. You didn't? Oh, yeah, have you I've fought him without yet? fighting him. No. <gasps> Doesn't he what have, like, the doing? highest health pool in the Souls games or something like Bro, that? he's easily the best, like, on repeated playthroughs, I think he's the best boss in the game. That's how good he is. Like, he's actually as good as Gale in terms of boss fight. He's a DLC he's, boss, no? He, yeah, yeah, you fight him before you fight Gale in a secret area. I could show you at some time, maybe, yeah. but Medir is essentially, like, because before the game had had uh, dragon boss fights, so, like, Dark Souls 1 had Calamite, who was pretty good. Um, Dark Souls 2 has Sin, who I've heard is a really good boss fight. I didn't get to that, because screw Dark Souls 2. I did fight the Ancient Dragon, however, is the most piece of crap, dog shit boss ever. I garbage, Is that the one garbage, that you uh, jump down from the ledge and kill, or am I tripping? No, that's the wyvern in three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. In imagine a dragon, right, who's bigger than Medir. So, like, imagine the biggest dragon you could think of, maybe, in, in, like, a video game. That's reasonable. Well, you could look up the ancient dragon. In literally the entire fight, it has a huge health pool, by the way. It has the largest health pool in the entire game. And the entire fight consists of having to slap its ankles and then run away when it does a downfire attack that basically covers almost the entire arena. So you have to run to its tail. And the thing is, is you could spend 10 minutes hacking at this thing, but if it hits you once, you die, no matter how much health you have. See, I like fighting, like, people. You know what I mean? Like, my fights against monsters are my least favorite because they just have, like, these stupid, wonky hitboxes and, like, do ridiculous damage. And, like, I just like me versus guy. You know what I mean? Right, more humanoid. The thing is, Madeir actually... Like, he's, his, his, the hitboxes are good, and, like, the moveset's actually versatile as hell. Like, by the time you beat Madeir, he's that boss that once you beat him, you can first try him. Every, it becomes a dance. Like, it's, I'm vouching for him. I think That's he's what my friend said. that good. 
My friend said that yeah. about uh, Gale. Like it becomes Gale's a dance. Gale's a dance as well. Yeah, yeah no, Gale's a da- Gale is so... Oh, the music. The music, the music. We got to talk about the music, your favorite soundtrack. Um, Honestly, like, I don't know if it's because... I don't know if it's because I just, you know, oh, oh, the uh, boss fight itself, but I really like Osiris' <laughs> theme. Like, I've listened no, to that Osiris in the gym a few times. Fire. And yeah, um, yeah, no. obviously, I got to go, like, Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. The bling, bling, bong. Right, right, right. That fire. was fire when they brought that back for the... Uh, oh, yeah, the, the, the Soul of the Cinder Soul fight? Of Cinder that was crazy. Phase. Yeah, no, no. When I heard it, I, like, screamed, dude. <laughs> right. For me, I think my favorite themes... Obviously, the main theme in the main menu, that makes oh, yeah, me yeah, come yeah, yeah. every yeah. time. Like, they have a metal version of it, too, That's that fire. I gotta send you, because it goes hard. Um, Vort's theme, of course, is fire, but I think my da, favorite... Da, 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 da. Yeah, that second phase. But for me, I think Abyss Watchers, the Twin Princes... Uh, or the incest twins, which is what we Lothric call Lothric and Lorien. Yeah, Lothric and Lorien, and I think I think Gale's theme are probably my favorites. Although Osiris is, is incredibly fire as well. The only thing I don't like about the Osiris boss fight, the only thing, is he has a move with no startup frames at all. He just charges. Oh, yeah. He just dashes. Now, if you stay under him, you'll be fine. Um, and overall, it's a pretty chaotic fight, but I think the presentation of it's what does it for me. Like, he, I think he's the only boss in the entire game other than Gale and Freed where you walk in and they... S- no, no, and Lorian and Lothric. They're, yeah, See, that's it. The, yeah, the yeah. thing about Osiris is, like, when I fought him, I was high as... <laughs> I had no clue what was going on. So, like, A, the boss fight was... It took way longer than it should have, and B, like... It made it so much more impressive. Like, I was just so confused why this naked dragon thing was, like, cradling an invisible baby. And, like, you know, when I was normal the next day or whatever, and I looked up lore videos, it was just, like, so, like... Crazy. <laughs> like, you find out that the yeah. baby was probably real. They had textures mapped to it. Like, there's, there's an actual baby planned, he's holding. Yeah, yep. And he just... It, yeah. Just squishes it like a fucking grape and, like, goes crazy. Like, <laughs> right. it, it's, it's terrible. Right. No, yeah, that one. For me, I think presentation-wise, the Osiris boss fight is is probably... It, it's up there. It's up there. For me, I think... Oh, man, the first boss that I think actually drove me insane, but I think has one of the best presentations regardless, is Nameless King. You fought Nameless King, right? I honestly... Like, I didn't think Nameless King was that hard. Oh, I, was, I thought you were about to say you didn't fight him. Well, no, to that's each their own, different bosses for different people. But Nameless King, I, just, I think I fought Nameless that's, King too early. That's the weird thing, bro. Like, a boss that's, like, mm. the hardest thing in the game for me could be, like, something that took you, like, two tries, one try. Right, right. Like, Champion Gundy, everyone was telling me he was extremely difficult. But my first time fighting him solo, like, he was one of the easiest bosses for me. And he still wow. is to this day. Um, even though I, how in, incredibly aggressive he is, I guess I'm just good with aggressive bosses in yeah. a way. Pontiff is dope. I think Pontiff Sullivan is such a dope Pontiff character because cool, yeah. he's like, he's just pure evil. Like he just pulled up to the city of the gods and was like, "How can I mess this up?" And then just did it. Like it's amazing. Um, so I guess moving on a little bit from Dark Souls Three, great man. Now you got me thinking. Like we do got a PVP now actually. Um, <laughs> run some co-op as well. But uh, I think uh, Elden Ring. I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to feel about Elden Ring. I think it's going to be really, really good. I think it's going to be really great. But, and I haven't, I didn't play the network test because I didn't get in, which broke my poor little heart. Um, But I'm wondering how they're going to balance out having such an open world and yet having the boss encounters still feel somewhat linear. Because I don't know how much of the Mm -hmm. world you have access at first. You get what I mean? Because it's like um, in Dark Souls 1 you can get like late game equipment extremely early if you know the path now if you're a new player this isn't really a problem because you'll be smart enough to be like oh i probably shouldn't be here right um but on like repeated run throughs like dark souls one you can get late game equipment extremely early and then you go back and every boss fight becomes like a cakewalk until later game in dlc and then with um dark souls 3 Dark Souls 3 world building suffers a little bit, and I I think it's a bit of a bonfire checkpoint if I'm going to be critical of the game, but I think how linear the game is allows for the bosses to be right where they should be. You know, like the game's difficulty, I think, increases properly. I guess essentially what I'm trying to say is I think Elden Ring will be phenomenal, don't get me wrong. I'm just wondering, like, how they're going to manage that whole open world thing. Because I don't play many video games, so I don't know... 
you know, of many, I haven't played many, like, open world games with boss. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yeah. I'm wondering how they're going to manage all that. I've, um, per- like, intentionally, like, starved myself of uh, Elden Ring gameplay for the most part. Like, I've seen a little bit. Like, from what I've seen, mm-hmm. it looks tight, dude. Like, it looks like it does they've look taken great, yeah. what worked from Sekiro and Dark Souls and they put it together. Like, in Sekiro, you can just run past the enemies, go straight to the boss and fast jump, as hell. Yeah. And there you go. Like, I hated in Dark Souls that I had, like, trek through, like, all these enemies and get, like, bullshitted by the same, like, thing that, like, pushes you off the edge. Like, <laughs> like just it, there's just the so many annoying things. Yeah, I, I, I like, that was my least favorite part of Dark Souls. I really liked fighting the uh, right, bosses. Right. Did not like trekking through, like, mobs. Like, I right, think that was right, really lame. Right. I like that in Elden Ring you have, like, a horse and you can jump and, like, the checkpoints are, like, easier and you just go straight to the boss. That looks sick to me. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it does. Have you sure. ever played Breath of the Wild? No, I haven't played a Zelda game ever or a Mario game ever. Wow. Well, in Breath of the Wild, it's like open world and like it's you can fight the bosses whenever you want. Like that's the the big draw to it. Like you can fight Ganon as soon as oh. you uh, start the game or whatever, right? But you just get ego checked <laughs> and you're like, all right, well, this boss isn't going to work. I'll do that later. And then, you know, you carry on and fight a different oh, boss okay. that's more suitable for you. So maybe, I don't know, maybe right. Elden Ring's going to be something like that. Or, I don't know. I have no idea. Right. Yeah. I think I think the main thing I'm going to be looking forward to other than like of course the experience and then the story. And this is why I'm really considering like not streaming it even though everyone wants yeah. me to is cuz I feel like I'm not going to enjoy it as much if I stream it. Um so I probably just won't. Uh but man, I'm so looking forward to like especially the one chick with the long red hair and the detachable arm. Like if she's a boss fight, like her story and like just the overall narrative that the game's trying to present this time around and the music oh uh, i need new osts i need new i need yeah. like don't get me wrong like i still listen to the bloodborne osts and the dark souls ones all the time but elden ring oh uh, oh uh, yes give it to me give it to me give it to am me. am i tripping or was that like you know that like tree like the main like the main tree in elden ring like in all the marketing you yeah. see that like energy tree is that not a berserk reference yeah. or or what i think it is yeah yeah the the tree yeah like when i first saw yeah. that i was like that's totally berserk right I think everyone drew that that uh, thing. Like, don't worry, you're not tripping. Everyone okay. went like, "Oh, yo, that's the that's the tree from Berserk." Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. sick. I really like the yeah, world. I'm I- so sick of like ugly, grimy, dark worlds. To be honest, and I know that's like you know like a really big theme in Dark Souls. Maybe other people don't feel the same way, right. but I, I just like to be outside and not in fucking hell anymore. Something, something a little more fresh, yeah. yeah. I think that's why, yeah, I, I'd agree with that to a certain extent because I think if they did something like Bloodborne, it would have just been too much, you know, because yeah. Bloodborne is by far, um, at least environment-wise, the darkest one. Gothic, it's a sad place. Know, of craft crap. It is. It's. Uh, I think it's the wor- Out of all the Soulsborne worlds to be in, Bloodborne would be the last one I'd want to be in, without a doubt. Um, it must stink horribly. But Yeah, uh, I mean, they're all hey, British. Yeah. <laughs> Right, like right. It couldn't smell good. But yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, what, what was I thinking? Oh, British. Um, but I guess kind of uh, moving on now from the uh, from the the souls uh, conversation now uh, into uh, screw it. I actually don't want to get into. Oh, you got your somber right voice now. out. Uh, <clears throat> do I? It, did it change that much? I guess <laughs> yeah. I'm just a little. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Um, but, uh, where do you, I guess, do you, and this is a very simple question. This is like that crap that they would ask on dates, but like, wh- <laughs> where do you see yourself in like five years? Um, shit. Thought provoking, ain't it? I mean, like, I like YouTube. I'm always probably going to do YouTube. Like, even though I'm an old guy, yeah. like retired. Like, I'm probably going to be like, here's how you fish you a trout um, type stuff. <laughs> right. Hopefully. Right. It's going to be interesting. I don't know. Like, I, I hopefully I don't. I'm at a point. Hopefully I'm at a point where I don't need YouTube. You right. know what I mean? But I'm still doing right, it. Right. Like, like right. how I have to do, like, work projects, like stuff I'm not very mm. passionate about. Um mm. Hopefully I can just completely eliminate that and be like, well, this sounds like a fun video to make. I'm going to make this. Stuff like that. Right. Where do you see yourself? Yeah. Uh, well, um, that's tough because, you know, it, five years ago I had a very different answer, you know. Oh, yeah. Or, or at least like five years ago, being a YouTuber, an anime YouTuber, uh, a manga YouTuber was like the last answer, would have been one of the last answers because I hate reading, or I did. 
Um, I, it's become something I've, I've learned to enjoy. Um, but in five years, I don't know. Hopefully married. That's one of the things for sure. I, I definitely want to be married um, in five years, without a doubt. Um, settle down and have a family. Um, I want to be at the point where YouTube also isn't something that I have to do, but like I want to do and, and when I upload videos. So it's not like a financial commitment that keeps me uploading regularly. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, I can, I could have transitioned from YouTuber to, uh, to being an author. That That's kind of what I want to do right now. You know, life changes, plans change, but at the current moment, that's something that I'm really passionate about and something I want to like stick my hand in. Um, is actually like creating something uh, that I yeah. think has more value than just my random thoughts on a series, you know? Uh, so that's where I hopefully see myself. It's weird because like I think about it and I'm like, man, I'm going to be really old. And then it hits me. I'm like, I'm only going to be 25 in five years. So like that's like really yeah. weird to think. It's like I'm still going to be like very young technically. And so then you think about it and you're like, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Like, what am I going to do when I'm 40, when I'm 50? And I mean, if you're still doing YouTube, that actually be very interesting. Like just seeing somebody grow oh, I throughout definitely their will. life while they're still low-key uploading content. Our generation is like so much different than all like the, like other old people, you know, or, or like <laughs> we're, uh, us as old people are going to be weird as fuck. You know what I mean? Like our humor is just so like, past random. irony and like yeah. randomly generated yeah and it's like yeah yeah I, I don't doubt that there's gonna be a ton of people like 80 even just like still making videos and you know doing stuff like that right right our ge- is our generation please tell me we're not gen z i don't know i don't know how the generations work i don't either what, what is generation x gen i don't know hold on i think uh, there's a generation y too Generation X. Generation X is people who were born from 65 to 80. Millennials are 81 to 96. And Gen Z is uh, 1996. Yeah, we're Gen Z. Or I am. I don't know how old you are. 40-year-old bastard or some shit. Yeah, it could be. Damn. Damn, that hurts. Um, there's something I wanted to ask you. Uh, we oh, get no. lobbed in with all those other ones, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one thing That's I wanted cute. to like say that I like thought of after you asked the question is I would like to have like multiple like other channels. You know, like I've entertained the idea doing of the gaming stuff. channel. Like I would I like yeah. to actually be creating content Dude. over there and like doing other stuff. Right. Yeah. Do you ever think you would do like face cam IRL videos? No. 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 <laughs> I, I do not want to be recognized. Like you, you know, I'm shy, dude. Like I would not like yeah, that's right. to be yeah, yeah. recognized in public and like have to, you know, be like, hi, you know, I'm putting on my fake personality that can't say slurs. <laughs> so yeah, that would right. suck. Right. I don't think I've ever. No, I don't think there's. At least from what I know of, no one's recognized me. Like really? only my my friends. Um, know you know that I'm me and that I do uh, you know did you uh, blow up on like your like your old high school friends like re- you know like did, they, did your old high school friends like find out about your channel and like um, freak out there there have been circumstances of that I mean the original homies who because I, I was always someone in school because like the, my senior year I <laughs> I got kicked out of my old school and I, I ended up in a public school my senior year wow so uh <laughs> I'll tell the story uh, after the thing. <laughs> but um uh, essentially like I, I get there and uh, you know some of the, the the players from the soccer varsity team they're playing right because it, it was a weird thing where you could like when you were done with your lunch you could go and like play in the gym if you wanted to during the free time it was dope oh yeah they ended up closing that the year after though because people got into too many fights and stuff but um essentially like the guys they were playing indoor they were like playing indoor <laughs> soccer and so I'm there my first day I'm new and all the whatnots and so i'm just like oh i hop in play and i'm i I, okay i'm not even going to be humble about it i was killing people like they clearly they didn't they underestimated me because i showed up in like dress pants and like jordans because i didn't know what the uniform was so then i'm just like going in and playing and so it was one of those things also just like being tall and all the whatnots and the personality that i had in school like it was always like everybody knew me but i didn't like to know everybody i wasn't going to parties i wasn't doing that like i just kept to my group of homies so they all knew they all knew my channel and they all saw it kind of blow up in a way um so you know they hit me up every now and then and, and ask me how it's going the ones that i'm still in touch with um mm-hmm. but i think the only 
There, there are times where like my friends have brought it up, and I hate it when they do because that, that's <laughs> yeah. happened before. Like, so usually when someone asks me like, "Yo, what do you do?" I usually just say I edit, which is hilarious because that's the last I do thing the I same do in my videos. Shit. Um, but it's, <laughs> but essentially like. I'm like, oh yeah, I edit and all the whatnots, and then one of my homies will be like, bro, quit lying. He does, and then they'll show the channel and all that, and then whenever it's like a basic white bitch, then you already know they'll be like, oh my god, could you like shout out my TikTok? <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, uh, and then I leave. That's another thing, um, bro. I think TikToks are the are the move. Uh, they are, but I think they're so garbage. Like there are some really funny ones, but I feel like I'm losing part of my dignity and integrity masked. by if I ever started Most a TikTok. Most the memes we send each other are TikToks masked. Listen, but those are memes. If I made meme content on TikTok, I'd get in trouble because of my sense of humor. <laughs> so like, yeah, no, I'm, I mean, so just like, like from like an advertisement standpoint, like you upload, like yeah. you pay someone to like take clips of. Uh, your TikToks and like, or not, sorry, not clips of your TikToks, but pay the someone to take like videos, the videos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the only thing with that though, is I know someone like my boy, your true captain. And he's told me about it. He's like, you blow up from it. But the issue is you also get a lot of dead subscribers. Oh yeah. It's like the TikTok people that. will follow, but their attention span is like less than two seconds. Yeah. So, you know, expecting them to watch an eight minute plus video is, uh, is a bit rough. Um, that's why i don't use it that often like i can feel my attention span waning as i like indulge in more like you know me, uh dopamine trap type social media like even instagram like you'll just end up scrolling through instagram for like five minutes like waiting for something to make you laugh and it's like what the like what have i been doing yeah nah yeah that that's why i try to be very careful at with that social media that's why i have um I have other people run my my Twitter and my Instagram, which uh, there was a huge scare regarding that. I won't get into yeah, it. Yeah, it's a mistake. But uh, <laughs> but I, I addressed it, so we won't have to worry <laughs> about that anymore. Um, but no, yeah, it's it's one of those things where that's why I don't I don't like it either, and I had to get off of because it's one of those things where someone asked the question and it was like, do you think that like Michael Jordan goes around leaving YouTube comments or going back and yeah. forth with someone on Twitter or Instagram? Yeah. No. So then why would you waste your time doing that? Like if you have enough time to genuinely get into a whole thread back and forth with someone over Twitter, you are mismanaging your time. And I had to look at myself mm -hmm. at one point and go, oh yeah, no, screw this, I'm out, you know? And so now it's just like, whenever I feel like doing a random thought, then bam, that's a tweet. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time, time management's often important though, because like with the YouTube thing, and I don't know if this is it for you, but like for me, I'm not, other than like working out and working on this mm -hmm. story, and all the whatnots like i'm not really doing anything outside of like my whole youtube thing so sometimes i have a lot of time to just do what i want and that's where like you could get caught in that social media just scrolling waiting to yeah. see anything compelling yeah i'm at the point where like i've uh outlined a timetable for myself like you know 12 to 1 p.m i do this three two to three p.m i do this and like i've set limits on like all of my uh social media like i can only use instagram and tiktok for like 10 minutes stuff like that that's what's up yeah no that's what's up that's good time management's important because like you don't yeah. time's the one thing like you never get back and once yeah. you especially when you're people realize yeah. that concept now continue sorry oh no 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 i was just saying like people just don't uh realize that concept like you don't mm -hmm. you don't get time back like you're not 20 twice like you're just 20 once and then you move on like there's no you know so imagine going back and realizing you wasted even a month of your entire lifespan on social media when you if yeah. you were to accumulate the entire time like that's a terrible thought the thing that fucks with me is like if you waste let me do the math real quick divided by 60 yeah if you waste a second every day that's six minutes by the end of a year if you waste like a minute every day that's like what six hours Something it's, like it, that. it's just crazy how like time accumulates and like when you're self-employed like you and I like time is especially like I'm not trying to sound like a, a Sigma male right now um, but time is like especially valuable and like if you don't have a schedule to stick to you're gonna lose like so right. much productivity right yeah 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 that's why like, I, I had think to get back into working out because I realized like yeah. I was just becoming a very unproductive person and I, I hate that. Like, Are you I doing it like more crap. so for like discipline? Uh, discipline and also because I'm super, um, I'm very hard on my appearance. Like it's like almost Patrick Bateman levels from American Psycho. Like Never I'm that, it. 
that care. Oh well, Patrick Bateman is um, he's a serial killer. But the 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 main thing about him is he's extremely like that's Christian Bale as an actor at his best physically. Hmm. So like he's very uh, harsh on it. Now obviously for me it's also like athletic motivations. Like I like playing still uh, sports and all the whatnots. But yeah. it's also one of those things where it's like again I'm not young forever. And if I ever do want to get married, like, this is kind of like a personal pride thing, but it's like, I want my body to look phenomenal. Like, I want my wife to be able to be like, yeah, that's my man. It's kind of an ego thing also, but yeah, discipline well, think, as well. It feels good. I think every human should be working out. Like, every single yeah, person. Same. Like, A, yeah. for mental health, B, for discipline, and C, uh, for body dysmorphia. <laughs> like, sometimes, you know, you just feel <laughs> right. fucking fat, bro. Like, right. I don't know, I, I really think that every person should be doing something like even right. if you just have to go on a walk for like 10 minutes or whatever no i you know i mean? totally agree because i think i think people kind of forget that what you feed your body and how you treat your body is such a ginormous impact on stuff like your own mental health yeah. like if you eat crap and you don't do anything for your body you're gonna feel like crap like that's just, it's like fueling a car if you don't fuel it with the right stuff then you know so then if you don't discipline and train your body, that's why I hate it when like there's, and I don't even care, when there's like the whole fat phobic crap. It's like, look, I'm, I'm not scared of no fat ass. Just like, <laughs> it's a genuine health concern. Yeah. And it's it's just like, dog, you know, obviously you should be happy with who you are, you know, as a, like, cause your character is what matters the most. But if you have the ability to better yourself, why not take it? That, exactly, that's yeah. just my principle in everything in life. Like if you have the ability to do something better like don't just sit around and then complain that other people are doing it better and then say they're being discriminatory like shut up and go hit the gym you know and and i get and i think a lot of people sometimes just might be scared of going to the gym but i guarantee you because i was someone who was severely underweight and i mean severely underweight um no like I've, i was never you know ridiculed at the gym or anything if anything, like after a hard workout, like so, there would actually be a guy who would like come up and congratulate me and, and stuff. I, I've always said like making fun of someone who's out of shape in the gym is like making fun of a patient in a hospital. Yeah, like they're there to get better, and just them being there should be enough. Yeah, um, that's a that's a thing that deters a lot of people is like they think that the gym is so much scarier of a place than it really is. Like, yeah, in my experience, like I've seen nothing but like support and like the biggest. You know, most brolic dudes are usually like the most helpful, and like they'll, they, if they see right. you doing something wrong, they'll like politely chime in. From my experience, right? No, same. Yeah, yeah. Because, and also, people need to realize when you're going to the gym, especially people who go there and they've been going there for a while, they're focused on their workout. Yeah, no one's looking. They're at not you. looking at other people trying to make fun of them. Don't get me wrong; there will occasionally be a jerk here or there in the gym, you know. But I've never run into one in the last few years I've been working out. But like, nah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Like people are just there to focus on their workout and get better or stay in shape. And it's as yeah. simple as that. The only time I really judge people if it, uh, is if they're like wearing lifting gloves. Oh, like the, the lifting gear and all the ones. I, yeah, yeah. I can't stop myself from like thinking like, what are you doing, bro? Like, oh, Just take right, your calluses right. like a man. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, it's the one thing that does bother me at the gym, though. And <laughs> I hate it so much is like you know how like girls will usually go in like yoga pants and all the whatnots yeah i hate it when like i'm doing something and then they'll go and do a workout in front of me in my like range of, of vision because i don't and maybe this is just a me thing is i don't even want to give the, the i don't even i want there without a shadow of a doubt to be like I, I want it to be known without a shadow of a doubt i'm not looking at it yeah you know what i mean like yeah. if, if there's someone who will go in front of me mean. and she's there i'll literally stare straight up at the ceiling while i'm doing my workout because yeah. i don't even want my head being in that direction because you know I, I imagine if like every time you were working out you thought someone might be staring or looking at you it's like i don't ever want to give someone that feeling so i just kind of like look up at the ceiling or look somewhere else or i'll just leave and i'll work out somewhere else <laughs> like i'm just like i'll just do this other workout and then once she's done i'll go back to this area because yeah that's exactly wanna... why when i use my phone like i just hold it out like pretty much everyone in the gym can see my phone just because like i know there's like creepy ass dudes that'll like record people from behind and shit like I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like ew. making people feel like that might be happening. You know what I mean? 
Uh, nah, yeah. I, I usually hold my phone down, like pointing down at the floor while I'm typing or doing yeah. something, and then put it back in my pocket or all the whatnot. Do um, you ever record your like, lifts? Um, I've never recorded my lifts, but I do have like post uh, workout pictures and stuff for like okay. my improvement. And Third all straps. The oh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, no, but but no, nah, I've never done like recording me actually doing a lift, just because I don't, I don't know, like I don't, I feel like having a camera present just brings extra attention. Like there's someone I know who like, um, and they're a friend of, of one of my my homies, and they'll like go in and they'll like vlog while they're in the gym. It's like, <laughs> look, bro, that's cool. But man, I hate it so much. Like See, obviously, that, I'm not gonna say anything. But ugh. that's the the thing, though. Like recording in the gym is surprisingly very useful for like your like major like if you're deadlifting or squatting or benching. Like if you want to get better at something, I think you should always record it. And like the thing is, they're not recording you do their that. workouts. Oh no, I'm not talking about that dude vlogging. Like, uh, uh, no, you're, just talking <laughs> I mean, about, oh, you're talking about just in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if you're you trying to get form. better at deadlifting, yeah, you should absolutely like know how you look when you do it, so you can address whatever issues you have. Right. Like What's even your if you're trying to get better at a fighting game, like you, you should record that and like watch yourself. I think it's like the same <laughs> right. with everything. Right. It is kind of. I think it's true though because like whenever you're um, you're like recording a video, and like at first you suck. But the more you record yeah. audios and videos and you hear them back, you can see what you're doing wrong and you can improve them. And then when you watch your own videos back, yeah. you can be like, oh, this is how I can make them better and all the whatnots. Um, I don't know if you've ever gone to my first video, but it's hilarious. Like, like I sucked. <laughs> like, just like my delivery is so like terrible and I sound like I'm a little kid, basically. Right. No, always your first video, you're like, you always sound extremely timid and... And, and, and a bit nervous and all the whatnots. That's, well, my thing is, like, I wanted to sound like I didn't care. Uh, uh, yeah. I and then I found out that, like, uh, people on Reddit didn't like that at all. So, like, I started adjusting the way I spoke. And, like, I found that you're supposed to uh, uh, move your mouth really wide like this so people can understand you. Really? I just kind of... I don't think I open my mouth wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when Fuck you're delivering that. voice lines, just, you're supposed to... Ew, hell no. I just talk how I do. Like, <laughs> I just kind of, like, talk however. Like, honestly, you can tell what mood I'm in in my video. Like, I'll just... I don't know. That's interesting, I've seen you, though. like, eating mac and cheese in one of your videos, dude. I, mean. I did. I was arranging clothes in one of my videos. I was eating mac and cheese in the other one. What the fuck? That's, I think that's the draw towards people in my videos that I've been told, like, from feedback, is people just appreciate how raw it is. Like, it's just, like I'm not a, a highly, pro, like... It's not a highly produced thing, you know, it's not like I'm a super professional guy, it's just sort of like, you know, this is just some dude who has too much time with a mic. Like, that's yeah. pretty much it. Um, but uh, I, real quick, going back to the gym thing, though, what's your least favorite day? Like, what like day do you dread? Like, leg day, shoulders, back, chest? Dude, I used to not give a shit about leg day, but like, now that I'm lifting a little bit heavier and it just, it, I'm just getting sick of doing it, bro. I'm sick of having that heavy ass weight on my back, man. I, I, leg day drives me crazy, bro. Like, my heart rate on those days, like, I'll check my Apple Watch, it's just so much higher than any other day. <laughs> it sucks. It takes me out. Yeah, I hate leg day, too. Because after the first two workouts, I'm done. I'm so done. Because yeah. I'm tall, my hamstrings are super weak. Oh, yeah, your so range like, of motion is crazy. Oh, I hate it so much. How, like, farther down I have to go to squat. I hate yeah. it so much. I hate leg day. Ironic for a soccer player, but I genuinely hate leg day. Like, it, I want to murder on leg day. My favorite day is chest day. Ch no, actually arms, because I think chest day can get a little mundane, because well, there's only like so much you can do. Sounds like you're doing a bro split. You know what bro split is? Uh, no, I don't. It's like one day for, like, chest, arms, shoulders, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it, it's it's like less efficient than uh, the push pull split. So like on a push pull um, split, you um, you have back and arms, you have uh, yeah, yeah. shoulder and chest because you know uh -huh. they're, they're like complementary Connected. muscles or whatever, yeah. and like you can work out more. I I did a bro split for like my first like four or five years lifting. Like it's not terrible. I'm just right no no the thing is is i was the opposite i used to do that i would do like biceps and back right uh -huh. and then i would do tricep shoulders chest i mm -hmm. do core every day and then legs but uh i started going with my homies and they were just like oh yeah we do chest this day we do arms this day and i was like oh yeah mm -hmm. sure cool fine why not and so it, it was like changing it up i might go back to the the push pull thing eventually yeah. but yeah right now i'm on 
Yeah, personally, what I've uh, noticed is it's kind of hard to also recover during push pull. Like, I think you do so much more volume than a bro split. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you end up sore for longer and like (laughs) weaker in your next lifts or whatever. Right. For me personally, but it's weird because like everybody's different. Right, everyone's body and how it reacts yeah. and all the whatnots. Yeah. Uh, do you ever take any stuff like uh, not steroids, of course, um, although unless you do, uh, but like pre workouts, post workouts, anything like that? Yeah, I take pre workout and uh, creatine. Everybody should be on creatine. Do you creatine, take creatine? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of That's course, good. creatine. Yeah, no, creatine's great. I've seen massive improvements uh, without a doubt. Um, pre workout though, because I was originally on, so I, I got a new pre workout that cost like it, it was double what my previous one was. Um, and it was like, it literally, it didn't even say we recommend you not to use more than one scoop a day. It just straight up was like, do not use more more than one scoop. <laughs> what uh, brand? So I think it's like Total War or something like that. It, the name was Raw. Uh, I think it's something like that. Total War pre workout. It is something like that. I don't know oh, how good it is. This looks toxic, dude. It, bro, <laughs> it, it, this is how I know it was. It doesn't taste good. So that's that's the one thing because like oh, the yeah, previous yeah, ones yeah, kind yeah. of have they're like not even trying to mask the chemicals. No, nah, they're not, bro. I took it. I felt like Tony Montana after a shot of coke. I was just like, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. Like it was so so like I was shaking. Oh, I felt so good. I'm about to work out later today. Honestly, I feel like now working out is just an excuse so I could take pre workout. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, nah. Uh, but now, yeah, I've been taking that. But uh, I guess now moving a little because we've been on the gym topic for a little while now. Oh, yeah, I yeah, know the majority of, uh, I don't know, maybe the majority of my audience is a bunch of uh, mega lifting chads. Uh, surprisingly, like, I think the weeb community is becoming, like, much more, more woven fit. in with the fitness community. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Especially, like, yeah. Berserk fans. Oh, no, Berserk fans and JoJo fans are huge, yeah. bruh. Berserk yeah. fans, JoJo fans, Dragon Ball fans, Dragon Ball fans, without a doubt. Yeah. They've always been they've always been pretty, you know, swole. We just got to get the sissy, like, slice of life watchers in on it. Yeah, no, nah, I, I feel like that's pretty much it. Like, I don't think there's much, uh, although to be fair, being a gym bro is pretty pretty normal because I, I wouldn't consider myself like a full gym bro tank top like like i said i'm still pretty lean um but it's either like mega buff or femboy like i feel like there's not much of an in between sometimes <laughs> in, the, in the anime community um but uh well, yeah i wanted yeah, to man. ask you something oh yeah go ahead i wanted to ask you about your podcast with giga like i found it on accident like a while ago uh, and i was like how the yeah, yeah. how did this guy get involved with giga right um so I got invited by this uh, by that channel, and that's when he had the. Uh, he told me he was gonna have. I think the other guy was called uh, Uprising. I forget the rest of the channel name, but he had, he had a, a really good video, um, and uh, and then Gigic, and I was like, oh yeah, sure, that's cool. Um, and so then I just hopped on there, and and you know I got to speak. At first, I was a little uh nervous you know because this is gigic and i'm gonna be dead ass honest i had never seen a gigic video before <laughs> whilst being on the podcast with him because no i'm just not like i think people and i want people to know this like i'm not that big into anime and manga like i like manga don't get me wrong um and i it's probably my favorite preferred choice of reading stories you know but it's not like like the only poster i have up on my wall is of cristiano ronaldo the, I own like one Dragon Ball shirt. Rico and that was you. from like you really when I was that. younger. Um, yeah. Uh, but um, like anime and manga is such a small part of my life. And whenever I watch videos, the last thing I want to watch is anime and manga. It's the last thing I want to do. Um, so like a Gigic video, I've always seen them and I know who he is clearly, of course, but I had never seen his video uh, videos. Um, I recently saw his uh, winter 2022 or not winter. Is it winter? Yeah, yeah, 2022 uh, nutshell, whatever it was. Um, it was really, really great video. His sense of humor is on point. I could clearly see why he's where he is. Um, but, you know, after getting to speak to him, like, Garnt just has that kind of uh, personality. Same with uh, Chibi, same with Roger, where they're just, they're so welcoming. They're just bright people. They, like, you know, they light up the room a bit. Um, and they like Garnt probably has the most elegance, and that might be because of his accent. Yeah, it's got to be. Genuinely, he genuinely sounds like a legitimately just elegant and well-spoken person, you know. And, and then yeah, no, he seems like a super cool dude, honestly. Oh, he is, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, I always feel like I'm the black sheep in the anime community. I always feel like it, without a doubt, because I see you must like have not seen what uh, they say about me on Twitter. Oh, what? they hate you on Twitter? Really? They, I see a lot of yeah. praise for you, bro. I'm being uh, badass. Lately, 
Like this year, it's been a it's been a great turnaround. But before that, like bef- here's the before thing: before that, you were infamous. Pre me being on Twitter and having a Twitter account, straight shit talk all the time. Right. And as soon as I get but his now, Twitter, it just crickets. Yeah. Can I be honest? I think the most amount of shit talk that I heard about me was when I wasn't on Twitter either. Like the the yeah. brief period I left, I dropped the Ashida no Joe video. People, oh, people yeah, 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 yeah. that used to follow me were talking crap, <laughs> which was so funny. I come back, I don't hear a word from them. Yeah. They Not always hit you with that, word. like, I, so he always rubbed me the wrong way. Right, like, he always like rubbed that. me the wrong way, bro. You were just calling me a goat three months ago. Like, you know, so, yeah. but I understand that's how the anime fandom is. They're so fickle in that sense. Like, they're very, um... It's a great word it, for them. It's very, yeah, like, it, it doesn't take much to upset them or get them on your side. You know, it doesn't. It really yeah. doesn't. Like, all you have to do is not like the same series as them or not like it as much, and then you're no longer a human being. And everything you do from then on, it's always cringe to them. It's hilarious. Uh, One thing I like works. about the people that watch me is, like, I feel like they're also people that are similar to me and are drawn to the same sorts of things and, like, aren't right. extremely into anime and like 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 it's not their entire life you know what i mean right and like i don't i like i don't know where i'm going with this no 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 i (laughs) i I get it like your audience you feel like your audience is is like you you like your audience basically like you feel yeah i mean um, yeah i mean there's definitely some weirdos and i've talked to (laughs) these weirdos and met them and yeah you know but but like for, for the most part like i don't know it's chill people that yeah kind of get it you know ah uh, no yeah uh for me it has not been that case i don't think <laughs> like it's one of those things where i think when it comes to most anatubers i'm probably the most vocal about how i feel if that mm-hmm. makes sense um like i did an entire video where i kind of just opened up where i was like yeah i'm gonna be completely honest i can't stand most of this community like yep like it in my opinion a good amount and this isn't i don't say this as like oh i'm superior i say this as like i would say this to anybody as as a sort of um warning call like it's like I don't say this because we don't agree on ideologies or but the way that I think most anime fans that are that active on Twitter and on YouTube carry their life is somewhat borderline pathetic. Like yeah, it sh- you should not yeah. you should not be this invested into something to where you know like if I see you on Discord all day and you don't yeah. do anything else dog that's just not good for you and it's scary because like some of these people are young you know like 15 16 17 so it's like you have your whole life ahead of you and but not um i'm pretty vocal about it but a lot of the content that i make is you know recommending manga right and so when i do manga recommendations then the people who are going to you know be geared towards that are people who are um pretty hardcore manga readers you know and i'd say I'd say for the most part, the majority of, of you know, the people who support me, I, I don't like the word fans. I, that, like, it I, makes yeah, me feel I uncomfortable. I fucking hate that. Yeah, I yeah. It's like my viewers, fans. my watchers, subscribers. Yeah, yeah, supporters, uh, you know, uh, people who support me, all the whatnots. Yeah, now, Roma wanted to troll me, and he was like, you should call your fan base the Akumetsus, and I was like, I will kill you. That is the most cringe <laughs> idea ever. He yeah. said it jokingly, of course, but um, not nah, like... The majority are cool, right? But the most vocal ones are, are the ones that are a little weird. Yeah. Like, do you I, notice that? That it feels I like think, people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think that like, <laughs> like obviously not everyone that's like really in to anime and manga are like weird or like outcasts or anything. Right. But at the same time, yes. you know, people that are like <laughs> outcasts and weird and extremely, you know, like. It, they're just in like bad places are also really drawn like they're the same type of people that are also drawn to anime and manga you know what i mean right like most people yeah. that like are really into it or like most people that are like like have a interest in anime and watch it pretty consistently normal completely cool chill like generally we're, we're all you know on the same page but also you get like the people that are like seeing themselves in main characters and like you know have no right. luck with like women so they like look to these fictionalized <laughs> like idealized you know characters exactly yeah and yeah. they just like think in their head that that's how the world works like those people are also you know drawn to anime and like those are the ones that 
you know you kind of think of when you think of like anime fans because they stick out like a sore thumb yeah yeah they talk a lot that that's the yeah. thing yeah no i i posted on uh my insta story i was it was something very simple i was like i had the best valentine's day not gonna lie i got to spend it yesterday with my girl and all the whatnots and uh i i literally got dms jokingly though but it was still funny where they were like i'm praying for your death i hope you get sick how could you post this <laughs> bro you're excommunicated from the anime manga community like it was so funny um but no, yeah, I, I, and this is something that I was wondering, because I feel like it's definitely happened uh, for you, but do you feel like sometimes people are, are genuinely, like, they like your channel and they like your content, but they feel like the only way they could get your attention is negatively? I feel like that's a very, that's a thing that I see a lot. Like, they try so hard to get your attention through trolling or just being negative. I don't know necessarily about that, but that, like, kind of uh, reminded me of this, like, other side of, I'll call these people fans. There's people that like are super into me, like just super, just vying to get my attention on like my discord and stuff and just like constantly ping me and like, you know, try to get my attention or whatever. And like, it ends up being those people when like, I'm not the person that they want me to be. They just do crazy shit. Like they completely yeah. flip and just hate you after. It's so weird. Like, have right. you ever had that happen? I don't think I have. Um, in, in the sense that it, it, I think like man it's tough I don't know I don't know maybe it has and I haven't noticed it um it's like the but, dude from Incredibles you know like the the, right, the villain from Incredibles yeah syndrome yes it's syndrome syndrome like, syndrome. like down syndrome no no <laughs> it's cause he looks kind of down syndrome which is funny like when you think about it anyways go ahead no but he's like such a fan of like you know the the hero and like he meets him one time and has a bad interaction and he's like oh my god i have to kill this person you know <laughs> it's the same thing with like super like quote unquote super fans it's it's really weird i'm surprised you haven't experienced that i don't i don't think i have any super fan i don't know i don't know if i have any super fans that i'm aware of um at least i don't think i do um and you know i always like it's one of those things where I respond to most of the DMs I get, unless you send me something absolutely atrocious, then I just like delete or like block. But for the most part, I you know I just kind of I give a very simple response, like it's like uh, hey what's up, and I'm like you, <laughs> you know. Um, but no, I haven't experienced, and that's so weird. I can't ever wrap my mind around it. I can't, I can't, I can't, because it's so weird. Because like growing up, I think validation was something that I needed desperately, which is why I always got in trouble in class and stuff like that. But now it's like. It feels weird. Like, it's humbling, but sometimes it's sort of like... It's like I'm supposed to like this amount of praise, but I don't want mm. this. Like, it doesn't it doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel right, you know? Yeah. Um, it's weird, though. I haven't had that. That I've, I have gotten thirst DMs, though. I know you get a lot a, of male attention, like dudes trying to hit you up. Do you ever get, like, ladies trying to hit you up? <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty. I try to be as cordial as possible. Um, on my old Twitter account, it happened a bit more. Um, but it, I think it was it was that kind of thing though, where it was I was so either unaware, or I was so cordial and respectful that I never allowed it to carry on into anything else. You know, um, yeah. it's just kind of like. Uh, I don't know, say someone sends, like, I, oh, I think you're cute, no, 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 whatever. It's like, oh, I'm flattered. Thank you. That's yeah. it. I'm never like, oh, really? Like, I, you know, because then that's yeah. just asking for it. I've seen so um, many YouTubers get caught up at this point, dude. Like, anytime I get any DM from a woman, basically, there's a very low probability of me even, like, responding. Right, yeah, yeah, I feel that, because you could get a, just, and that's the sad reality, and I talked about it a bit on my most recent vid, where I was just kind of like, on social media, all you have to do is get accused. Screw if the evidence makes sense, you know? Yeah. You just, the fact that you're a large content creator, or you're, like, somewhat well-known, and you're a guy, and you got accused, and on Twitter, like, it's over for you, you know, which sucks, yeah. and it's so sad, because then, once people realize they're wrong, hardly ever is the apology as large as the, you know, the fiasco that everybody created for something that turned out to be false in the first place. If it is false, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But now, yeah, a lot of YouTubers do get caught up in that kind of mess. Um, and so that that's always something that's... Ugh, it sucks. 
Um, but uh, I guess I guess we can kind of, uh, unless there's some other topics you want to get into or any other questions you might have had, because I don't really, you know, I'm kind of, if I'm being completely honest, my battery is depleted at this point. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, it sounds, I mean, this is about the time I wanted the podcast to be. All right. Awesome. Dope. Great. So we'll just end up wrapping it up here. Thank you all so much for watching us talk about all sorts of things. And uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, you're never going to see it again. But subscribe <laughs> anyways, because I think you'll enjoy my other videos. Uh, as always, this has been the uh, Masked Man. And uh, go ahead and... and uh, yeah, thanks for having me, dude. It's been, it's been cool. It's been a great yeah. second conversation. It's like uh, we've oh. talked more than two times awesome yes hopefully uh not another seven months from now we have our third one uh oh yeah i'm down y'all have a blessed rest of the day and peace